Hillary's untimely escape, everything has clicked into place with frightening precision. And I am no closer to finding out if this is my revenge, this gloomy uncertainty. I have wound my way into Carolary's company indeed, and I don't know if he killed Tomiko. I do not know. Possible murderers abound. I owe my word to some of them. Yet now it makes no difference, does it? We're sailing for Spellhold tonight, but I'll be damned if I let anyone find this proof of despair on me. This is the last entry in the journal. About one third of the pages remain empty. That's sad. Carrot is definitely going to keep that. As for this old Wakazashi, I don't know. Probably just going to get rid of it. Uh, we are all heroes. Minsk, this is not the time. That's just sad. Ah, there we go. We got a little insight as to what was going on. With him. Damn shame. It had to work out that way. But at the end of the day, it really all makes sense, doesn't it? Why he even bothered getting involved with us to begin with. If only he had said more, and if only Bodhi and Irenicus had not manipulated him as they had. It's terrible what anger and spite and vengeance can do to a person. Ready and able. It's just one big mess after another. Oh, well. Let's just go talk to our students. You point, I punch. I should hope that they finish this uh, item that they've been working on. Just name what you want. Though who knows, they're not exactly the most efficient students. We're all very exhausted, and we want to get things moving, so how about a little bit of magical energy to get things moving along just a bit more quickly? That might be a good idea. Anybody? Mmm, looks like Carrot is going to have to do it. Haste! Come on, everyone. Let's go through our tower. I think they're all the way over here. Run, run, run. And look at Minsk go, hasted with the boots on top of that. Whee! Alright, how's everyone doing? The task is completed. Please speak to Moral. Moral needs to speak with you about the task you assigned to us. Hello, Carrie LeRae. I am ready to tell you exactly what happened with our last task. We did quite well. Yes, indeed. I was worried, but we managed to create the spell with only a few bumps and bruises. I am amazed at how competent we seem. And I'm amazed at how we managed to stand ourselves with us being cowards. Yes, well, that said, it is time to move on to the final leg of the task set out in the tomes. There are no more preparatory lessons. Now comes the real test. We, uh, we couldn't take a break for a bit. We're moving pretty, pretty quick here. The pace must be kept up if the lessons are to properly teach the rigors of magic. Carol Ray, here are the details of the next lesson. Now comes serious enchantment. These items are powerful, and also potentially deadly, if not constructed properly. They show the true benefits of magical infusion. I don't know if they are appropriate for apprentices to make, but it's time to find out. The first is the robe of the apprentice, and uses many principles of magic. It will cost 250 gold to make. The second is the ring of wizardry. Such rings are legendary in their usefulness. Usually only masters make them, but I would like to try. It will cost 3,000 gold to make. The third item is from an advanced class. I borrowed a tome from a friend of mine who said no one has attempted it in years. It is armor for a mage. It is a staff of power and will cost 10,000 gold. Oh, that's crazy talk. You're out of your mind. I like a challenge, but I also like living. Do you know the power involved in that? Are, are you sure about this, Moral? That's pretty extreme. It's part of the discipline, I know, but if the advanced classes won't even try it... There's risk in all of these, particularly the last one. I think they are doable, but the making will be difficult, almost assuredly deadly. Which will it be, Cared Leray? Which should it be? Hmm... 
Well, we're definitely not going to ask them to make the staff of power, because they practically crap their pants when they start talking about that. We could just tell them to forget it. But we are training these young apprentice, and we need to make sure they know what they're doing. Magic is dangerous, and they need to be responsible. I'm thinking either the robe of the apprentice or the wing of wizardry. I mean, Carrot and Imowen already have good robes, but Yan could use a good robe. We could also go for a wing of uh, blah, 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 another ring of wizardry. I believe we have one, but if we had another, we could actually give that to Imowen, perhaps. That would increase our spell casting potential. Well, if it does prove quite deadly, I should like to, to remember you by. I'm going to go with a Ring of Wizardry. It's a must. I just know you can do it. And I think that they can. I mean, as long as they're careful, hopefully things will work out. A Ring of Wizardry. This shall be the hardest thing I have ever attempted to construct. It will be a fine conclusion to an apprenticeship. It will take a few days. I assure you that it will be everything you wish it to be. Such rings are always in demand, and likely always will be. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is work to be done. Alright. They made a scroll of Abidalzim's hard wilting. Good job, kids. Hopefully they'll be able to pull off this ring of wizardry without hurting themselves. Let's see, we do have one. It'll give an extra 5th, 6th, and 7th level spell, which is great. We also have a ring of acuity. It gives one extra 2nd, 3rd, and 4th level spell. So pretty much spell level 2 through 7, we've got extra spells with these things. We could give one of them to our companions here, which would be a major help. Oh, yes. Alright, good luck team. Be careful and don't get yourselves hurt. Actually, we should probably talk to them really just quick. Just to see what they're thinking about our choice. This is a fine task for a final project. I certainly hope the ring functions properly. This ring will be beautiful. I really wish I understood it better, though. I'm going through the motions, but I don't understand them. Rings such as this are delicate and dangerous. Please leave me to my efforts. Okay. Well, good luck, everybody. Let's hope for the best. I certainly don't want any of them to get hurt. They've done well so far, and they obviously need to push the limits and test themselves. Hopefully nothing too terrible will happen. gather your party before venturing forth. You must gather your party. Yes, we gathered our party. Leave us alone! Pushy. Alright, now I'd say it's probably a good time to actually go to... Our old hangout, the Copper Coronet, see if there's anything new to buy. And probably just rest for the night, considering the entire party, party is exhausted. And then the very next morning, we can go to Joaquin's Promenade and do a little bit of shopping, which probably would do us a lot of good, considering how much crap that we have that we should probably sell. Hey, everybody, how you doing? How you doing, Hendek? Uh, what do you got in stock? Ah, uh, just speak to Bernard. I forgot about that. Wait, what did he say to Jahira? He says, Jahira, you shouldn't be showing your face around here. It ain't safe. Not that you ain't safe in my sight, but... But what? But I'm on good terms with Harpers, and I don't want that to change. Words got around about what happened. Jahira, it ain't true, is it? Not the way they tell it, Bernard. You know me, so trust in what I do. Good enough for me. Business as usual between you and me, then. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's let's do some business here. Uh, well, let's see. Is there anything new that they have that we'd actually want to purchase? I imagine we'll just sell most of our junk at Joaquin's Promenade. This is a plus three sword that actually gives a bonus to charisma. Oh, well, that'd be neat if we had a a bard in our party, but we don't. Mauler's arm increases wielder strength to eighteen. It's actually pretty good. The Sleeper. Any human or demi-human excluding elves hit by the Sleeper must make a save versus poison or fall asleep for three rounds. That's neat. But nah. Light crossbow of speed. Army scythe. Gives one extra attack per round. That actually might be great for Yan. Thing is, is that he has a plus three crossbow, which really helps his ability to fight. 
He also has a battle axe named Stonefire, plus three. That would be great for someone who specializes with battle axes. And Azure Edge, plus three axe, functions not only as a melee, but also as a thrown weapon. Does extra damage versus undead, and undead that are hit by it can be utterly destroyed. Well, that's powerful. He also has potions. So he's got some neat axes. Some minor scrolls. Sword of Flame really isn't all that good. He's got some powerful spells here. Not sure we want to go blowing all our money on that yet. Might be a good idea just to rest though. Uh, let's check our spell preparation though. Make sure that we're not missing out on anything. How does the clarity work again? Races the pause between casting spells. Cast a new spell the instant he's finished casting his current spell. This effect lasts for two rounds. So basically he can cast two spells per round, which is pretty sexy. Anyway, um, yeah, that seemed okay. Jahira, I imagine everything is alright on this front. Yep. Yan, you got plenty of magic here going on, right? Of course. Uh, yep, looks good. Emowyn. Yeah, she's fine. Okay. Whoa, where is he going? Hi there. Unger Hildark has nothing to say to you. Yeah, yeah, surprise, surprise. All right, well, let's rest for the night. Uh-oh. It's scary dream time. Awaken. Awaken and hear me. Well, maybe not. I bring visions of warning, of what is happening now, and what may happen soon. This image will speak true, for you are of two sides, and the liars have said their part. You travel in search of yourself, divided, splintered. There is a piece of you missing. The hole inside you fills with death, with darkness, while another, Irenicus, kills with your strength. Look, look at the destruction he has wrought. See the corruption that he brings. The exile returns. Rodney comes this way. <gasps> Yikes. He has stolen your future to replace his own, avoided his proper fate. This must be undone. For your sake and theirs, you must take back what has been stolen. If their lives are not enough, then think of your own. You will lose yourself to the hole within. Yours is the potential to be your own worst enemy or your own savior. Hmm. Yeah, no idea who that was, but that was definitely Irenicus, and he was definitely killing elven people. And we are definitely not camping out in the woods. Oh, whatever. whatever I can do who says this all has to make sense? Clearly it does not. Must gather your party before venturing forth. Well, we look pretty gathered to me. Just name what you want. Oh, well, I think it's time to go to Joaquin's Promenade and just do a whole lot of mercantilism. They've got a lot of junk to pawn off that we've collected over a long time. Here we go. Let's go first to... Um... Uh, yeah. Let's go there first. Not even really sure who else who would ask for help for dealing with Bodhi. Should probably take a few days to let our apprentices or apprentice do their work. Meanwhile, we can go to the Adventurers Mart. Because none of the other shops here are really that decent. I mean, they have a spell store, but it's nothing special. Okay. 
All right. Don't even think about trying to steal something. Of course. All right. Well, it's time to do a whole lot of selling of stuff. We'll come back when it comes time to actually buying junk. So we'll be right back, everyone. Okay, everyone. We're back. All right. We sold a whole lot of junk, and we organized our inventory quite a bit. We found out we had quite a few interesting pieces. We actually have both parts of the silver sword, the silver hilt, and the silver blade. We also have the Gessen Bow String and the Gessen Bow Shaft. We have the Pommel Jewel of the Equalizer, the Hilt of the Equalizer, and the Blade of the Equalizer itself. We also have the Hammer of Thunderbolts, the Gauntlets of Ogre Power, the Girdle of Frost Giant Strength, and the Crown Fair Scroll. That gives detailed instructions on how to combine all of these items in order to make the Crown Fair an ultimate weapon of destruction that could still be completed upon use. Now, if there's anyone that we know about who to talk to about forging these powerful weapons, well, yes, we do know who to talk to. That would be our old blacksmith friend down by the docks, so let's go give them a visit. We sold a bunch of our old junk, and we now have about 42,300 gold, so that should be enough to pay the rather exorbitant fees that are associated with putting this kind of equipment together. So let's get on over there and commission some work. To the docks. Let's see, over to Cromwell's house. Just name what you want. And I will do my best to resist singing the Oliver Cromwell song, courtesy of Monty Python. Uh, man, those boots of speed really make a Minsk move like a demon. Look at him go. Can't even stop that guy. He just takes off like a rocket. Okay, here we are. Of course. Well, let's do some trading and some creation of some powerful magical I items. A oh, good afternoon to you, friend. Good to see you back in me forge. It is be there something that you need. Do you have anything you could forge into an item? Mm, I couldn't rightly say. Let me have a look at your goods then. A minute of rubbish and I'll show you for sure. Aye. Aye, now what do we hear? Mm, you have a hammer of thunderbolts, gauntlets of ogre power, a girdle of frost giant strength, and a scroll with a thunder hammer's true name. Crom fair. Tis a collection that would widen the eyes of the soul forger himself. I could create the Crom fair for you, friend. You have the interest, of course. What would that involve? Two things, my friend. It'll cost you 10,000 gold for the work, no less. And without an apprentice, you'll have to stay here a full day and help me run the forge. Sounds fine, let's do it. As you wish. For such a commission, we can start on it right away. No sense in wasting time, then. It'd be best if we just get to it. 10,000 gold. To reforge the Crown Fair. The group awkwardly standing around helping him, quote unquote, all day long. Let's see what comes out of it. Well, there you go, friend. Use it well. And if he comes across anything out of interest, you know where to bring it, eh? The Crown Fair. This is the true name that the Dwarven Weaponsmith Silverblade gave to the weapon he intended to create for his son. Alas, his son died before the weapon was ever completed, but here it stands complete. Forged from the combined magic of the original hammer, with the gauntlets of ogre power and a girdle of frost giant strength. Gromfair gifts its user with all the powers of the original hammer of thunderbolts, in addition to enormous strength, and the ability to kill golems, ettins, and trolls in one blow. It grants the user 25 strength score. It kills stone golems, clay golems, and ettins, and trolls in one shot. Plus 5 hammer, 2d4, plus 3 damage, base. 
Done, done, done. Wow, it makes Mitz's carrying capacity 1,600 pounds. That is unreal. <laughs> that is just insanity. Oh, I don't even know what to do with all of this equipment. Skull Crusher, do we even need this anymore? I don't think so. <laughs> well, it's good that he knows at least a little bit about Warhammers. He's certainly not a Warhammer expert, but damn! He's about as strong as strong can be. Can anyone else use the Soul Crusher, I wonder? No? I guess it's just going to have to go in the bag. Well then, that was interesting. Okay, let's see what else we can make. Yeah, you have parts of some sword here, is it? Let me see. Mm, I see if a hilt and a blade here for a long sword, and a pommel gem with much of its power. I could forge it all into one mighty sword for ye. What would that be? Two things, me friend. 7,500 gold for the work. And I need your help. Alright, so... I think he's talking about the equalizer. Let's put it together. Well, there you go, friend. Use it well. The Equalizer. Such is the age of this sword that its true origin has been lost to time, but markings hint that it was possibly forged in the service of Helm. Also called the Sword of Neutrality, it seems designed to seek and terminate extremes, to shift the universe closer to harmonious equilibrium. The further the behavior of a target from the balance, from true balance, the more potent the damage they suffer. It's always considered plus three when determining what it can hit. They go in damage. Uh, versus true neutral, it doesn't give any bonuses. Chaotic neutral, lawful neutral, plus one to hit, plus two to damage. Versus neutral good, neutral evil, plus two to hit, plus four to damage. Versus uh, other alignments, lawful good and chaotic evil, plus three to hit, plus six to damage. Slashing. It also makes the wearer immune to charm and confusion. That is a powerful longsword. Hell, let's give it to Yan. Bam! There you go, man. You're a badass. He's got the Equalizer. Yan is the Equalizer. That's pretty badass. Really, it is. Alright. Uh, what else can we put together? We can also put together the Silver Sword and the Gezen Bow. Let's do it. Oh, it's this end. Part of a bow. Looks like Gezen's work. Aye, indeed. Tis Gesson's work indeed, a strong and a shaft both. I could remake one of the great bowyer short bows for ye. Tis a truly powerful weapon. 7,500 gold for the service. Alrighty then. Let's get to work. Pound, pound, pound. Well, there you go, my friend. Use it well. And we have the short bow of Gessen. The finest bow crafted by Gessen Khan. This weapon draws energy from another plane, firing spears of lightning instead of arrows, and therefore never requiring ammunition of any kind. It is said that Gessen prepared to retire from his craft after selling the invaluable weapon, only to have the bow wrested from his grasp by a thief who used it to end Gesson's own life. The side effect of the bow bestows protection from electricity upon the user. Grants user 20% resistance to electrical damage. It is a plus 4 weapon, I believe. Plus 4 short bow. It fires lightning bolts. Uh, that sounds perfect for Imowen, who is currently using Tasheron's blow. Plus 3. It requires no ammunition. Well, I don't think this does either. Yep, it's just bare. I mean, you can obviously, uh, I think, pick ammunition with it if you want to. But you basically just shoot lightning bolts at people, and that's pretty damn cool. So this can go in there. And I think the last thing we have to put together is the silver sword. This looks interesting. 
Ye have a shaft of what was once a powerful halberd. If he finds the blade for it, I can reforge the old weapon without much fuss. Well, we don't, but whatever. What a mess you have here. Traveling for some time, eh? What's this? Gith craftsmanship. Haven't seen this in over a century. How old is this dwarf? Aye. You've the hilt and blade of a vorpal silver sword. If you're willing to risk the wrath of the gith, I'm willing to put it back together for you. What would be involved? 7,500 gold? Do it. We've already come across them and dealt with them. And they've already wronged us more than enough times. Scared does not feel bad putting this back together. There you go, my friends. We have the Silver Sword. This Vorpal Short Silver Sword radiates a dark aura when you examine it, and the blade is so finely sharpened it could likely sever a head in a single blow. There is a 25% chance each hit that target must make a saving throw versus death at a negative 2 penalty, or die. Plus 3 two-handed sword. Deadly. Certainly something worth keeping. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we forged all that together. It costs us a pretty penny in terms of cash. But now we have some genuinely powerful magical items. Some of which we could sell if we're really so inclined. But as far as the party's involvement goes, it would seem like they've done quite enough at this point. So I'm going to think, say, that this is probably a good time for us to take a break. Uh, off screen, we're probably just going to sell some additional junk that we don't need. Probably learn a few spells and do some shopping and other assorted affairs before we actually look properly into what is going on with Bodhi, if we can find the old wretch, and the Rin Lanthorn. We have Dritz to word and to help fight her, but it looks like we're going to have to go down to her undead crypt and see if we can tear Ready her up. Anyway, I hope everyone has enjoyed watching. We'll see you later and uh, next time. See you later, everybody.